hey guys welcome back to this tutorial on power system network design if you haven't yet subscribed to simtech channel please consider doing so right now in this tutorial we are going to follow up from the previous tutorial on the previous tutorial we saw how we took uh, a network diagram a network that illustrates a transmission line from the generating station down to the distribution substation for consumers. We have taken that network and converted it into a single line diagram where we've reduced it to an impedance diagram and to what we have today in front of our screen. So if you haven't watched those tutorials, you are more than welcome to look them up and see how we got to this network here just a quick recap this is a generating power station with an impedance per unit of uh, 0 0.24 that is 24 percent now the generator is supplying 132 kilovolt so which means this first bus bar have a 132 kilovolt potential then we have a first line, which is a transmission line, a cable. Then we took the, the parameters of the cable and converted it into an impedance. And then we have a second bus bar. Then we have another line. And we have a third bus bar. Then there is a transformer here that is now transforming from the higher potential to a lower potential. That is from 132 kilovolt to 66 kilovolt. And we have a third line here, and that's going into this load. But uh, on bus bar 4, we still have another load. And bus bar 2, we have another load. We will be talking about loads in the, in the, in the coming tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, we want to focus on how to convert this impedance into per unit. Why is it so important to convert the impedance into per unit? Because we will use the per unit values to calculate the entire network impedance and determine what will be the short circuit current for each bus bar. We want to know what's the magnitude of the short circuit current on bus bar 1, bus bar 2, bus bar 3, bus bar 4, and 5. That way we'll be able to work out the type of protection that we need from each bus bar and uh, the device that need to be selected in terms of current transformer, circuit breaker, and so forth. So let's dive into it and see how we're going to get these per unit values. As we have already said, G1 is supplying a 132 kilovolt on bus bar 1. Now we have to convert the impedance with the base apparent power of 100 MVA. Now the generator already have a per unit that is given to us. Now we only need to convert this impedance here with a base of 100 MVA into a per unit values. Now we've already seen how to do per unit if you look into the previous tutorial. So the first thing to do for line one is to get our impedance, which is now in this form, that's a rectangular form to convert it into the polar form. From there then, what is our Z per unit? Now there is a formula for Z per unit then we need to find our Z per unit for line 1. Now Z per unit formula says is equal to ZA over ZB. ZA, which is this particular one here, and ZB, which is the base impedance of the actual line. Filling up the formula, ZB is equal to 174.24 ohm. Since we already know what's the value for ZA, then we're just going to replace into the Z per unit formula. That gives us 0 0,011 with an angle of 73.82 J per unit. So that is now the Z per unit for this line 1. Now we're moving on to line 2. Now we're going to follow the same procedure. We got ZA, which is the actual impedance of... Uh, line 2 right there then we convert it into polar form as we've done with the line 1 then we use our formula for zb now zb remains the same because 
the the main parameters for calculating zb is obviously the voltage for the zone so as we can see the zone one and zone two have the same magnitude so it's still 132 kilovolt on this bus bar so zb remains unchanged then we can quickly go ahead and calculate uh, our z per unit for line two replacing the values in the formula give us this value here 0 0.0113 with an angle of 73.77 degree j per unit ohm so that's the value for z per unit for line two moving on for the transformer t1 now the transformer t1 it's a bit complicated but we've done it before now transformer t1 we can see it's a step down transformer the transformer have a rated apparent power of 80 mva so that is going to be considered as how a ZB old. Then the Z per unit old is 10.1. That is 0,101%. So moving on, so we got ZB new is 100 MVA and ZB old is 80 MVA. And ZB old is 132 kV and ZB new is 132 kV. So why it doesn't change? old and new because we can see that this transformer the primary is 132 the incoming line here also is 132 kv so both old and new are exactly the same value then we move on z per unit old is 0, 0,101 j now moving on we replace all the parameters into the z per unit formulas this give us a z per unit for the transformer of zero comma one to six j per unit converting into polar form give us uh, a magnitude of zero comma one to six with an angle of 90 of 90 degrees the angle is 90 degree precisely because the transformer is believed to be purely inductive so the angle will be exactly 90 degree lagging the next step is then to find the z per unit for line three right there now we now know that bus bar four which is the potential that is supplying line three have now changed now we know that line three is being supplied from bus bar four and bus bar four have now a potential of 66 kilovolt because a transformer here converted from 132 to 66 kilovolt so now we have to bear that in mind when we calculate this line 3 z per unit so what do we do there as always we convert our actual impedance into a polar form then the interesting thing now is our zone voltage v base for the zone is now 66 kilovolt it's no longer 132 like in the previous bus bath from there, we know the formula for ZB, and ZB formula is VB square over SB new, which is the base MVA that we are calculating the entire network. So we found a ZB of 43.56 ohm. Now we can then calculate our Z per unit, which is Z actual over ZB, and that gives us thus value for z per unit of line three that is zero comma zero two one with an angle of 85.73 degree j per unit ohm so this is now how you convert an impedance diagram into a per unit diagram in the next tutorial i'm going to replace all these impedances with the corresponding per unit that we just calculated from each line and the transformer here and from there we now going to be able to determine what will be the short circuit current the short circuit magnitude for each bus bar then we can then talk about what kind of protection and rating we need for the current transformers and relays and so forth please if you like this video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to simtech channel thank you Yes.